Welcome to WTSA, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly being held here in New Delhi. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Arnaud Tade, who is the chair of Study Group 17, as well as being chair of Working Group 3B. Uh, Arnaud, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, Max. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uninitiated, that those numbers, what do they mean? Study Group 17 and Working Group 3B, what, what are the work oh. of those two? <laughs> Please. Yes, so there are two different objects indeed. Um, during the assembly, we have two weeks to do a massive amount of work and in particular to review around 70, 100 resolutions and, and text. And so to facilitate the work, the assembly is split between uh, committees and this is a way to organize the work and to have spe specific committees working on specific parts. So there is committee one, committee two, committee three, and in three there is two working groups, working groups 3A and 3B, and I had the honor to chair a committee 3B. 3B was about engagement, and we'll come back on that later. For uh, engagement, meaning all the texts that are about engagement, industry engagement, gender, uh, next generation, and so on. For as to group 17, the, that's, that's what comes after the WTSA. So when the WTSA is finished, we start a new uh, study period, and in the study period is when all the so-called study group engage the work. And study group 17 is the number for the study group on security. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the working group uh, 3B uh, and some of the elements that were discussed and some of the key topics um, that are both pertinent to this conference but also uh, to the work of ITU. Yes, yeah, so 3B uh, this time to cover engagement in general. That was a resolution on industry engagement that was about uh, restructuring the study group itself to make it good conditions to engage it was about uh, strategic planning, what's the strategic planning we want to build ourselves for, uh, for the tea sector. It is about, as well, next generation, gender. It was about open source. Uh, it was about uh, the, sector, the sector members of the developing countries. Uh, so it was really about a number of uh, nine texts that were really important. And for so people who don't know, when we start the group uh, two weeks ago, it feels like an eternity. Uh, prior to that, there is a huge work done by all the nations by, uh, through their region work for perhaps two years. That's two years that the whole world is working and preparing what they want to negotiate in terms of resolutions. The resolutions, it's a big word, and for people who are not familiar, when they hear resolution on X or Y on the big TV show, that's the same text. It's United Nations work. These resolutions, they give the mandate. This is here for us to scope what we allow ourselves to do, we don't allow ourselves to do, we give guidance. As, a, as well, sometimes it's about the symbol of where we are going. It gives a direction for, a signal for the world. So two years ago, uh, in the WC20, uh, I had the chance to chair as well 3 but that was a, a completely different topic. This time I was extremely proud to lead this one because the topic is essential. Imagine for gender, it means that succeeding here means probably that many girls in the planet will be able to have a different life because this text could allow some governments to recognize, prepare budget, give directions, and that will literally change people's life. Same for next generation. I mean, yes, next generation is not just the youth people. I'm only seven years in the ITU, I'm 56 years old, but I feel like the next generation, and in my head, I'm very, very young anyway. So, so for me, it was really important that the, uh, the assembly, all the countries in the world, recognize all of that. Excellent. And coming back to study group 17, the work of study group 17, are you pleased with what is to come? That's a big question. So. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have uh, been uh, elected, truly elected this time uh, uh, in, this, uh, in the special circumstances of uh, this assembly. Uh, it's a big honor to, first of all, have received such a broad support from uh, a large amount of countries to be in charge of this group. This group uh, has a responsibility and is well known, if people don't know the G17, most of the practitioners know about the famous public infrastructure and the X.509. That's, that's the pillar of what allows the little s that you have in HTTPS, that's because of, of Study Group 17. So Study Group 17, uh, we will probably surely come back together, Max, when I am in charge, but 
uh, there will be a lot of challenges that we have to go through because uh, for many reasons we need to modernize study group 17. I want to change the conditions of workforce study group 17, especially for industry engagement that we did in 3B, especially for gender, especially for next generation because I need to really rejuvenate uh, uh, this very brave study group. The other problem is the state of security itself. It's really alarming. You know, I see in all the speeches we had from Prime Minister Modi and others uh, during the week, yes, people speak about uh, um, um, digital private infrastructure, which is right. Uh, they speak about AI, which is right. But underlying, none of this is going to work if it's not secure and trustable. So the problem that very pe few people understand is the harm of the cyber criminals is at the level of $6 trillion of business, growing to $10 trillion. Uh, uh, dollars of, of business. And generative AI is going to accelerate this. So I am seeing at the same time a need to modernize AG17, which is not easy. Right? It requires a transformation program which I have prepared and I, I'm going to check, uh, share that with my vice chair that have been as well elected tomorrow. But the problem is really what concerns me is the seriousness of the situation and the fact that in a certain altitude when you start to take step back on, on the world, you see this damage and you are wondering. We've done all of these things for 40 years and we are still not able to stop them. What's wrong? And that's the big question I will ask the team to, uh, to start to attack correctly. It's going to be literally a tenuous program, but we have to take that bull by the horns. Finally, with regards to WCSA, how optimistic are you that the work that has been done here uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, will be carried on uh, successfully? Oh, very good question. Well, I'm very optimistic precisely because two years ago on industry engagement, after the battle we lost in WTSA, the battle we lost in PP, I thought we were doomed. But WTSA gave an instruction to TSAC, the government body, and we really acted, and we were reflecting on the success of having now a strategic planning resolution, a new one. It's fantastic. It's the first time we are able to say, now we can work on our own vision. Secondly, the whole package of these resolutions I had the chance to lead with a fantastic team of vice chairs and ad hoc chairs. If there is one thing I'm proud of is that I could choose the right ad hoc chairs. Mr. Bruce Gracie, Gail Martin Cochet, Dirk van der Emden, Pierre Fraudieu, and, uh, and Minali. I mean, it, it, was a, it was a fantastic team. And so the result is that it's tangible. In two years, we managed to get an industry action plan in bed with, with uploads from everybody, including for the R sector and the D sector. We managed to get a fantastic industry engagement workshop we managed to get to resurrect the reporter group on, on strategy and operation planning. I think we could not be in a better setup. So this is going to boost actually the effort, keep the momentum. I'm extremely confident we're going to have. Plus, to, to be clear, I see as well the new generation of colleagues that are engaging there and want to make it a progress. So I'm very optimistic. We had a very good WTSA and I'm very optimistic for the future. Well, Anna, thank you very much for joining us in the studio sharing your valuable insights with us, and we look forward to catching up with you very soon. Thank you, Max. I'm sure this is not the last time. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't too. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.inc. Thanks for tuning in.